Hey guys, uh, volume of pyramids today. A pyramid is a polyhedron in which one face, the base, can be any polygon and all the other faces, which we refer to as the lateral faces, are going to be triangles that meet at a common vertex, a common point, called the vertex of the pyramid. If we go back to prisms and even those videos that you watched on YouTube I linked, a polyhedron means that there's not going to be any curves. So pyramids do not have any curves. Polyhedrons are made up of polygons. Polygons don't have curves. A pyramid is only going to have one base, and then all the other sides, all the other faces are going to be triangles. The lateral faces are always triangles. Those triangles meet at a common point called the vertex. Um, that middle section there is just telling us that for a pyramid to be a regular pyramid, the base is going to be a regular polygon and all the lateral faces are congruent isosceles triangles. I'm just going to cross that off. It's a regular pyramid. It's going to have congruent triangles around the side and the base is going to be a regular polygon. The height of a pyramid, also known as the altitude, the height of a pyramid is the perpendicular segment that goes from the vertex to the base. We've talked about this a couple times now. A base and a height always have to be perpendicular. Perpendicular, remember, that means they form a 90 degree angle. Um, in those videos you watched, you hopefully picked up on how we name solids. Uh, la earlier this week when we named prisms, there's two congruent parallel bases and we use the base to name the prism. We use the base to name pyramids as well. So here it says name each pyramid and identify the base and the height. Um, well, in order to name it, you're going to have to know what the shape of the base is. So I usually identify the base first. In this first one here, our base on the bottom, not always on the bottom, but a lot of times it will be, is this four-sided figure. Now, I'm going to call this a rectangle because they don't mark the sides congruent. If all four sides were congruent, then we would say it's a square, but since it's not marked, I don't want to say that. So we're going to call this a rectangular pyramid. Pyramid. Um, the height has to be perpendicular to the base, and if you look right above here, it goes from the vertex to the base. So starting at the vertex, I'm going to draw in my altitude, draw in my height. Make sure you mark that it's perpendicular. Cool. The second one here. The one polygon that's unlike the other polygons here has six sides. I'm going to shade it in in green. A six-sided figure it is called a hexagon. So this is going to be called a hexagonal pyramid. The altitude, the height, has to start at the vertex, and then it's perpendicular to the base. So that red segment there, that would be the height. We can identify that with a little h. And then this last one, um, the shape of the base is this purple triangle. So this here is going to be a triangular pyramid. Sorry about the poor handwriting pyramid or my lack of spelling here. Height in red from the vertex perpendicular to the bottom there. Cool. Good stuff. Um, remember... We're working with volume of these solids. I'm going to erase this so I have room to write. And volume is defined as the number of cubes that fit inside of a figure. So if we want to write that down again, number of cubes inside a solid to find the volume of a pyramid. We are going to take one-third big B times H. Remember, big B stands for the area of the base. And then H is going to be the height of the pyramid. Volume of a pyramid. One-third big B times H. Right there. Circle it, star it, write it down. Again, we try and keep it organized for you here. So on number one, we have on the right side, height, base, 
big B, area of base, and V for volume. Like the prisms, like when I named them at the top, I like to identify the base to start. So for number one, it says find the volume of each pyramid. It tells me it's a square pyramid. Okay, so I know that the shape of the base here is a square, so all four sides are congruent. So then to find big B, I'm going to take the side length and square it. The area of the base is going to be 64. H stands for the height. Remember above there, the height has to start at the vertex, and then it's going to be perpendicular to the base. So our height is 5. Now to find the volume, I'm looking above here. The volume is 1 third big B times H. And if I substitute, that's 1 third 64 times 5. And you're going to just use your calculator now to compute that. Um, this gives me a gross, what I call a gross decimal. So I'm going to leave it as an improper fraction. Ooh, 320 thirds meters cubed. You can write it as a mixed number if you want, but don't round these decimals unless it says to. Cool. Number two. Oh, bear with me here, guys. We'll zoom in here. Number two, we're trying to find the volume of this regular, excuse me, not regular, but rectangular pyramid. At the top, I would write our volume formula, which we had on the other side. Volume of a pyramid is one third big B times H. Big B stands for the area of the base. H is the height of the pyramid. So, Number two, they tell us it's a rectangular pyramid. I like to shade it in anyway, so if I shade this in here, the dimensions of my rectangle are 16 and 6. So 16 times 6 is going to give me a 96, so that's the area of our base. H, the height of the pyramid, has to start at the vertex and then be perpendicular to the base, so it's going to be this red segment. The little 20 there, you guys, I'm going to highlight it in orange. This is actually called the slant height. It's slanted. It's the height of a lateral face. That's the slant height, 20. Uh, if I erase my shading in here, this 8 centimeters on the bottom in purple is referring to this distance from the center of the rectangle to the edge. So if I look at that triangle that I have in three different colors, this purple segment is 8. The orange segment is 20 and we're trying to figure out the red segment which is h the height and we know that the height is perpendicular to the bottom so what we have here is a nice little right triangle can you guess what theorem we're going to use yay the pythagorean theorem good job so pythagorean theorem h squared plus h squared equals 20 squared leg squared plus leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. 400 minus 64 is 336. I don't think that's going to come out clean here. Nope, it doesn't. So we're going to break this down. If it said you could round, you could round. It doesn't say to, so we're not going to round. So we're going to use our simplifying rules here, and we're going to simplify 336 using perfect squares. 16 can go into 336 21 times. And the square root of 16 is 4. We don't know what the square root of 21 is, nor can I break it down any further. So we're going to say the height is 4 square root 21. Now, to find the volume, I have the formula written there at the top. Volume equals 1 third big B times H. I'll try and squeeze it in over here on the right side. 1 third the area of the base, 96, times the height, 4 square root 21. Right. Um, a third of 96, you guys, is 32. So now I need to take 32 times 4, which gives me 128 square root 21 centimeters cubed. Cool. So see here, we're going to have to use our Pythagorean theorem sometimes to find the height of the pyramid. Number three, if you want to try this one on your own, go ahead and pause the video right now and see what you can do 
for number three. <laughs> if you didn't pause it, that was my pause for you. Um, number three, it's a square pyramid, which means the shape of the base is a square. All four sides are going to be congruent here. I can shade in the base if you need me to. So to find big B, the area of the base, we're going to take the side length, 12 square root 3, and square it. Careful when you use your calculator. Um, I'm sure you could do this without it, which is what I'm going to do. To square something means take it times itself. So we're going to take 12 square root 3 times 12 square root 3. 12s are on the outside. 12 times 12 is 144. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 would be the square root of 9, which is 3. So then I need to take 144 times 3, whew, and we get an area of 432. That's our big B. H, the height of the pyramid, has to start at the vertex perpendicular to the base. So here it is. It's this red segment. Um, using some more colors here, orange. I don't know that length. 12 is the hypotenuse there. This 30 degrees is referring to this little angle here. So again, if I redraw this triangle for you guys over here, here's H, that's what we're trying to find. Here's my little orange leg. Here's the hypotenuse, which is 12. And my 30 degree angle is right here. So if this is 30 and this red angle is 90, that means this one guy has to be 60. I apologize, it is not drawn to scale here. Opposite of the 30 degree angle, this is the short leg. Opposite of the right angle, we know that 12 is the hypotenuse. In a 30, 60, 90, the hypotenuse equals the short leg times 2. So if the hypotenuse is 12, then the short leg must be 6, which is also the height of the pyramid. So now that we know the height of the pyramid and the area of the base, we can find the volume, which is one-third big B times H. So we got to take 432 times 6 and then divide that by 3, 864 centimeters cubed. Good work, gang. Keep it up. Last one for pyramids is a triangular pyramid. Oh, I was going to try and make that picture bigger, but I can't. You guys, I'm sorry. I don't really know what I'm doing. Oh, it's not our last one either. We have a composite figure on the back. <laughs> okay. Triangular pyramid means the shape of the base is a triangle. So if I look here, this base, that side's 11. This side is 11. And this is 14. I'm going to redraw the base here. 14, 11, 11. And then there's this little segment here, which it's hard to see, but it's perpendicular to 14, that orange segment. And that is a length of 8.485. So to find big B, the area of the base, I'm going to have to find the area of the triangle, and remember to find the area of a triangle, it's one-half base times height. One-half, the base of our base triangle is 14, it gets really confusing with all these bases, and the height of this triangle here is this orange segment, 8.485. So to find big B, I'm going to take 7 times 8.485. 485 because half of 14 is 7 and that would give me an area of 59.395 Whoop! Good stuff and then H the height of the pyramid has to start at the vertex and then be perpendicular to the base So the height of the pyramid is 13 To find the volume volume equals one-third big B times H Ugh, that one is gross, you guys. I'll let you round this one. Approximately 257.4 millimeters cubed. Cool. All right, one more.
Two more. Goodness, Mrs. Carol, this is going to be a bad video. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Um, number five, a rectangular pyramid. We have to find the volume of this. With a length of seven feet, a width of nine feet, and a height of 12 feet. So since it's a rectangular pyramid, that means the shape of the base is a rectangle. You don't have to always draw a picture, but I like to. It's geometry. So we've got a length of 7 and a width of 9, definitely not drawn to scale. And then the height here, that's referring to the height of the pyramid that would go from the vertex straight down to the bottom. That's going to be 12. If I want me to draw in the rest of my pyramid, it would kind of look like this. Beep, 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 beep. Cool. To find the volume, it's 1 third big B times H. So we have to figure out what big B equals. And what H equals, H, 12, height, big B stands for the area of the base. Well, they tell me the shape of the base is a rectangle. So to find big B here, we're going to take 7 times 9, which is 63. Therefore, the volume of this pyramid, 1 third, 63 times 12, which is 252 feet cubed. That was a good one. Number six, composite figure. Volume, 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 volume. Remember, volume is the stuff on the inside. So I want to see how much, how many cubic centimeters I can fill up this composite figure with. Composite means it's made up of more than one. The two figures we have here is a pyramid on the top and a prism on the bottom. So let's see if I have enough room here on the bottom if I write small. Top, which is a pyramid, plus the bottom, which is a prism. That's going to give me my total volume. I have to add the top and the bottom together. The top pyramid and the bottom prism. To find the volume of a pyramid, it's one-third big B times H. Big B stands for the area of the base. H is the height of the pyramid. So. I'm looking just at the top pyramid here. The shape of the base is going to be what I'm outlining in blue. Would we say this is a square or a rectangle? Yay, it's a rectangle because the side lengths aren't the same. This one left and right here is 18, and then front to back on the right side is 14. That's a rectangle. So to find the area of that rectangle, we're going to take 18 times 14, which gives us 252. And then H, the height of the pyramid, has to start at the top, the vertex, and go down to the bottom and be perpendicular. So the height of our pyramid is 10. So then the volume of this guy would be 1 third, 252 times 10, which is 840. Cool. Um, the prism on the bottom, then, to find the volume of a prism, this goes back from earlier this week. It's just big B times H. Big B still stands for area of the base. H, height of the prism. Remember, a prism is going to have two congruent parallel bases. I'm going to do these guys in purple. So I'm going to use the bottom of the solid and then this one that I already highlighted in blue. These are my two bases in purple. We already talked about that they're rectangles, so 18 times 14, 252. The height of a prism has to connect the two bases. So connecting my two purple rectangles is this length of 6 centimeters. So that's the height of the prism. So to find the volume here, it's just big B, 252, times the height, 6, 15, 12. Sounds like an important year, a war or something, war of 1812. Who knows? All right. Anyways, to find the volume, you have to add these two volumes together. So 15, 12, plus 8, 42, 5, 13, 2,352 centimeters cubed for a total volume. Great. I hope you enjoyed your lesson over volume of pyramids. Make sure you email us if you have any questions. Sorry that got long-winded. Uh, happy days, guys. Keep on keeping on.